We interrupt this Nautilus at Nine news broadcast podcast to bring you part two of a very special presentation. You're listening to Edit Nine Radio 4. Hello, I'm Keichel Main. When I was just a lad, I remember running home just as fast as my little legs could carry me. So I didn't miss one second of my favourite radio programme. One day, as I waited with anticipation with my plate of beans on toast, I turned on my little radio and my beloved series was suddenly replaced by a bunch of bloody stupid rubbish called Interdimensional. I was so mad, I unplugged my little radio, took it out back and beat it to death with a bloody cricket bat. And now it seems this bloody horrible show is back in full colour audio, whatever the bloody hell that means. Which I can only imagine nowadays makes people take out their earbuds and flush it down the bloody toilet. Now don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. I know I'm the way out. I find my own way out. Don't bloody touch me. You're listening to Edit 9 Radio 4. Sound. Staged sound. Jane Sarah Jones, a rather unadventurous human female from the planet Earth, was rather flustered to find herself in a medical emergency involving a collapsed man. She was even more rattled to find that only seconds later a hospital in the shape of a tall box or boxpital had materialized next to her out of thin air. This was nothing compared to the thrown off balance feeling she felt when the man who emerged from the box was not a man at all but in fact a medical intern from outer space. However, what really got her worked up was the fact that the collapsed man was infected by an intergalactic space slug that had recently spat some rather disgusting mucus into her face. Oh my God! Now, Jane Sarah Jones is no longer flustered, rattled, thrown off balance or worked up at all, but instead has opted for the more fashionable state of going completely mental. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. All right, don't panic. I've got just the thing in the tesseract. Ah, now, where is it? Where is it? Aha! Here it is. Quick, drink this. What is it? Anti-endoparasitoid medication for sycophant sickness. Last one in stock, lucky for you. Bottoms up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's awful. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, about to get a lot worse, I'm afraid. What do you mean? What have you done? All right, easy, chill out, you're going to be fine. You're not infected by the slug brain saliva anymore, it's just, um, uh... It's just what? Well, uh, it just says here on the label it's past its sell-by date, so it could be a touch, um, uh, fermented. Fermented? What the hell does that mean? Uh, basically it means in a minute... You're about to get really drunk and then really sad. You're not very good at this job, are you? Oi, I'm just the intern. I never said I was the bloody doctor, did I? Hurtling through space and time in his mini medical lab, he is known as the Intern, a universal healthcare provider for the universe who answers the call of the ill and injured throughout the infinite. He is Intern Dimensional. Wait a minute, where did that man go? The, the one who spat on me, the slug brain. He's gone. Escaped! Oh, that's just great. Now he's going to infect all of London. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my God. Perhaps even the whole world. Oh dear. Uh, okay, easy, easy does it. I've got you. Everything's going to be fine. Don't touch me, you liar. Nothing's going to be fine. It's going to be the opposite of fine, you thicko. All right, look, just sit down for a moment. Let me explain. Shut up. Thicko. Oh, stop saying thicko. Now listen. A celestial sycophant like this, 
very common in your solar system, and lucky for the Earth, it has a very limiting reproductive cycle, meaning every newborn worm brain... It's slug brain! Yeah. They go. Yes, yes, slug brain. So every slug brain can only spit once to reproduce. And since you've been spat on and treated with the Astrothoracophridae aborcohol, that means... Wait, that... wait, 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 whoa. Aborcohol? You made me drink something called aborcohol? Oh, no. <laughs> that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. You're a bad doctor, you know that? Oh, let's not start that again. <laughs> people out there. <laughs> what happens to all of them? Nothing. No, no, no. Not to worry. Look, this particular extraterrestrial <laughs> mollusk is quite common on your planet. You'd be surprised how many of your race have already had their brains eaten and secreted by this pest. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 look, 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 look. All these galactic gastropods want to do is sit around all day and do bugger all. That's why they love the human race so much. It's all about TV, video games and social media for them. Because that kind of thing is very appealing to a race of do-nothing, layabout space slugs. Is that racist? Yeah, probably. Look, the universe is a big place. It's filled with trillions of planets, billions of different species, and they're all trying to get along with the understanding of the how and the why of everything. But if most of the human race is going to act sluggish, then, well, you're going to attract slugs. Mm, that makes sense, actually. Does it? Good. Well, you're feeling better, which means my job's done. I'm off. Wait, you... You really came from outer space in that thing to help me? Well, the who and the why of it's more the Tesseract's department. I just apply the Band-Aids. So where, or, or when, are you going now? Oh, I couldn't tell you, but I can pretty much guarantee that wherever I end up, somebody or something will be bleeding, broken, coughing or sneezing when I arrive. It's all rather disgusting, really. Why do you want to come? What, me? Really? Travelling through the... Fabric of space and time. Yeah, why not? It's better than living sluggishly. Oh, the fabric! Oh! Oh, the fabric! It was the fabric! What does that mean? Got to make a quick stop. Get in the Tesseract. Hmm, not very comfortable looking in there, is it? Well, it's smaller on the inside. Come on, try and close the door. We're off. <laughs> Vanishing from planet Earth in his rectangular box beetle known as the Tesseract, the intern and his new companion, Jane Sarah Jones, bend the astro avenues and cosmic cul-de-sacs of time and space only to materialize once more on the vomit-flavored planet of Biolgax. All right, here we are. Medical services. Hello? Hello? Oh, what's that smell? Oh, it's like a sauna filled with rotten fish heads and feet. Yeah, nothing like an alien atmosphere to make you feel homesick. Oh, don't say sick. Oi, who's shouting over here? Oh, it's you again. <gasps> oh, my God. What the hell is that? Oh, Biogaxian. Try not to point. Oh, my God. It's a creature from another world. I'm on another world. Yes, try to be cool about it. Hello! Just thought I'd pop back and visit my favourite patient. Oh, uh, this is, um, uh... uh... Jane. Jane Sarah Jones, actually. Which set of eyes do I look at? Uh, those aren't eyes. Stop embarrassing me. So, how are you feeling? Oh, awful. I think I'm hungover. I'm not asking you, I'm asking my patient. So, ha... Huh. Yes, I see you cut the old tail off there. You told me to. Yeah, 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 I did, didn't I? This is so unfair. I'm the first human being to ever set foot on another world and stand next to a talking alien, and I'm hung over. You think you've got problems? I've lost my job, my wife, my kids won't talk to me anymore, and I've brought shame on my people. Yeah, wow. Yes, tails are a real big deal here, aren't they? A bile gax without a tail is a bile gax... Is a bile gax forgotten. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I should have let that fungus kill me. Fungus? Galactic gangrene, he told me. Ah, uh, gang blue, actually. And about that... What? Am I still gonna die? Die looking like a no-tail? Die looking like you? 
Look at me, steady on. Let's not get carried away. When I look in the mirror, I don't see something that looks like the love child between an orc and an octopus staring back at me, do I? Wait a minute. What have you done this time? What do you mean by that? I'll have you know. Does he I... still have the infection or no? Uh, firstly, he is a she, Miss First Time Off Earth. Oh, I'm t I'm terribly sorry. Um, Sharon. Um, I'm 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 terribly sorry, Sharon. I. I just assumed that when you said wife... Oh, you... yes. We all know what you assumed, Jane. I did say, try to be cool. What about the infection? Uh, it turns out it wasn't an infection, actually. It was an allergy. An allergy? An allergy to what? Cosmic snow. Not completely uncommon. You had an allergic reaction to the fabric of space-time. What? Well, the fabric of space and time is quite old, as you can imagine, and the more it expands, the more stretched out, the more worn out it becomes, and seeing as you work at such high altitudes on your, um, uh, death ray thingy, then it's only natural that you're going to inhale some of the microfibrous snow from a worn down and used up universe. So... So, I've got an inhaler here to help with your breathing, and some cream for the rash if it ever returns, which, uh, doesn't look like you'll be... Needing. Because she has no tail now. You really are the worst. Oh, look, I did say I wasn't the bloody doctor. I did warn her. You ruined her life. Oh, did I? Do you even know what she does for a living, Jane? Hmm? Tell her. Disintegrate worlds. Disintegrate worlds. Yeah, so I'm the worst. I ruined the life of a mass-murdering octopus. Well, how was I supposed to know that? Excuse me, um... Sharon, hi. <laughs> it's my first time in space, Sharon, so I'm a bit rusty on the old um, alien relations, but uh, why disintegrate worlds? No tails. What? You've got no tail, and any planet governed by a species with no tail is, is a, a planet, planet to be forgotten. Am I right? Yeah, it's all about the tails with these guys. My God, is everyone in space a racist? Probably. Wait, 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 wait. You, you said I've got no tailors and my planet should be forgotten? Of course. Ugly little blue-green dot just hanging around, taking up space. You know tail Terrans would have been disintegrated by now if I still had my job. But that's my home. You can't blow up my home. Hey, come back here. I refuse to let you blow up the Earth. Oh, let her go. But you heard her. She's talking about destroying the Earth. Well, not anymore. But what Jane, if... she's got no tail anymore. And without a tail, her plans to destroy the Earth are, well, forgotten. Are you sure? No, not really. Let's go. So, you stopped her from blowing up the Earth? Yup. How did you... I mean, was that your plan? When did you... Well, it's a... Combination of scientific knowledge and quick thinking and... So, you mean the Tesseract did it? Yes. All right, Jane, it's the bloody Tesseract. Happy? Good. Let's go. Fine with me. Oh, wait. There. An outer space selfie. <laughs> My nana Luna's not going to believe this. Your grand is named Luna? Yeah? Why? Uh, no, no, nothing. Uh, about the going home thing, I can't actually go back to the Earth unless there's an actual emergency thingy. What? But... I've got a life, a job back there. Oh, don't worry, we'll get you back there. The Earth is always in trouble, believe me. Really? You have no idea. But in the meantime, you can think of this as an adventure, providing universal health care to multiple universes. Ah, oh, brilliant. Is it? No, it's rubbish. Let's go. Oh, it's cramped in here. Why, why is that shaped like this anyway? Oh, the carpentry circuit's broken. Look, uh, I'll tell you along the way. I'll try and hit the siren with my elbow. You try and close the door. And we're off!
Intern Dimensional is a Nautilus at Nine presentation produced by Launchpad Theatre Company. In the episode Jane Sarah Part 2, the role of Jane Sarah Jones was played by Christina Patterson. The roles of the Biogaxian, the Intern, and the Community Corkboard to the Cosmos were played by David Radford. Intern Dimensional was created and written by David Radford and is protected by Shield Maiden of Media, Christina Patterson. Intern Dimensional will return. And while you're waiting, why not subscribe for free, rate, and review The Nautilus at Nine on iTunes. To find out more about all things Launchpad, go to launchpadtheatre.com or like us on Facebook. Or why not become a Skynet pirate and follow the Nautilus at Nine on Twitter at Nautilus at Nine, and we'll make sure to send you an ahoy, matey. Thanks for listening. We now return to your regularly scheduled moment of silence.